Few reports in recent years have produced such angry blasts and counterblasts. The fundamental charge laid against the CIA is that it tortured detainees with nothing to show for it. Today, in a highly unusual news conference, it was the turn of the director of the spy agency to respond. And crucially, did he accept the word torture? I certainly agree that there were um, times when CIA officers exceeded the policy guidance that was given and the authorized techniques that were approved and determined to be lawful. They were harsh. Uh, as I said, in some instances, I considered them abhorrent. Uh, and I will leave to others how they might want to label uh, those activities. He said that after 9-11 there were no easy options. And on enhanced interrogation techniques, or EITs, he gives a very nuanced statement. The detention and interrogation program produced useful intelligence that helped the United States thwart attack plans, capture terrorists, and save lives. But let me be clear. We have not concluded that it was the use of EITs within that program that allowed us to obtain useful information from detainees subjected to them. It's no accident that the CIA headquarters are out here in the remote Virginia countryside. The organization prefers to stay away from the political hothouse of Washington. But this week, it finds itself caught in the middle of a raging battle between Democrat and Republican, the current regime and the old. George W. Bush, under whose watch this all happened, hasn't commented since the report came out. But his vice president from the time has, and boy, does Dick Cheney not like it. He called the report crap. A torture victim from the Vietnam era, John McCain told us the U.S. needs to move on. It is behind us and it's not allowed anymore. So I think that uh, America understands that this was a wrong chapter in their history and now we need to move on. But the Senate Intelligence Chair hasn't. She maintained a stream of tweets throughout John Brennan's speech, rebutting much of what he said. Could this debate become any more bitter? John Sopel, BBC News, Washington.